Hi all, um, in this tutorial we're going to cover how to do this kind of disintegration effect uh, which is done with two mesh networks, uh, both with two nodes I think, and then uh, just a texture deformer. So uh, the uh, everything is being powered by one volume noise shader and so the, the sphere growing up, the spikes growing and then shrinking and the faces shrinking, that's all controlled with just one noise shader so you just change the settings on one noise shader and you get a completely different look so um, it's really really cool setup so let's get going um, I need to create a geosphere to start with and uh, not, so not not a regular sphere um, and um, Maya 2017 has no built-in geosphere so we're gonna have to make one the hard way and um, so feel free to um, find this ridiculous um, so to do this we need to create a, a platonic solid and then change the solid type to isosahedron and uh, then we're going to go to the whoa, modeling menu set and uh, smooth it and then we're going to change the smoothing method from exponential to linear uh, whenever you do that you get kicked out of the smooth face node so go back in there change the division levels to th uh, three and then we're going to change the divisions per face to two now if you hop on over to the platonic solid node and then uh, this is simple right and then uh, increase the radius you see that we've got a not sphere but we've got nine Nice kind of topology. We like the triangles, but we don't like the shape of it. So uh, Maya, thankfully, um, has a deformer that will turn any shape into a sphere. So that's great. Uh, let's use that. So we just uh, select the um, uh, solid here, and then we'll go to the deformer menu. We'll go to the sculpt deformer, um, and then uh, just with the sculpt deformer selected in the outliner here, we're just going to hit the scale key R, and then scale up, and ta-da! If I just hit four, you can see the sculpt deformer inside there. Uh, we now have have a sphere. <sighs> Easy, right? So let's just delete the history on that and get going <laughs> and then start the tutorial. So um, first things first, let's do the texture deformer. So let's add a texture deformer and we want to um, deform along the normal. So if I play with the texture color here, you can see that we're deforming along the normals. Uh, we want to do this with a volume noise shader. So let's um, hit the checker box there and then hit volume noise and just gonna scale up the place 3D texture like so, and then hit the output connections to go back to the volume noise. And then we can start playing with some of the settings, something like that, and then um, change the noise to say volume noise and that's still too big so let's make it something like that actually that might not have been too big let's go into the texture former handle and I'm going to change the strength to say 10 wow it is too big so <laughs> let's scale that a bit more and then we've got this kind of <clears throat> crazy shape like that so um, let's say that that's what we want um, and we can always change this later, there's absolutely um, no pressure on that. So what we want to do is we want to go from a, um, a sphere, starting you know, like this, and then we want to end up like that. Uh, for some reason, you get these little dents sometimes, and it's something to do with the amplitude. Uh, so if I reduce the amplitude, uh, then they go away, so I don't know. I don't quite understand what's going on there. Um, but anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to animate the color gain, because the color gain is going to shrink this back down to the original shape, like so. So if we animate the color gain from, say, frame 1, from black to, uh, to say, frame 75 when... Uh, no, let's try 50 when it's white, like so. And then on, say, frame 20, let's animate the threshold from 0 to, and then frame maybe 90, set this to 1, something like that, and then right-click, set key, and then what we've got is that. Um, if I if you hit select on the volume noise, then the keyframes will appear here in the um, outline uh, in the uh, timeline. I'm just going to move that keyframe over to frame 30. So you shift click on a keyframe to move it, um, and that's the the same goes for any mash node. So if you're on a mash node and you're like keyframing things and the keyframes don't appear down here, just hit the select key and then um, that will select the node and then and any selected node's keyframes appear in the timeline. That's how that works. So our animation is this. Okay, so. Let's say that we're happy with that. The next thing we can do is create a mesh network. So uh, I'm going to create a cube. I'm going to give this cube a red material just so that we can see it. Um, we're going to hide them in a second anyway. So uh, let's create a mesh network. So over in the 
animation or FX menu sets, so it's where the mesh menu is. So that's created as mesh network. Let's grab the original cube. I'm going to shrink it right down because there's going to be a, a lot of them. Um, so over on the distribute node here, um, if you roll down the mesh uh, settings here, we can drag in our sphere, which is called P solid one. Uh, the default is scatter, so you can see we've got some couple of red dots on the surface there. Change that to face center and then hit flood mesh and that puts one on every single face. Um, okay, so that done. If we scroll through the timeline here, um, remember there is a mesh point in each one of these faces and so they're going to stick with the mesh as it goes up and um, we like that. Uh, so what we're going to do uh, next is we can add an offset node. So we had an offset node like so. And the offset node allows us to offset values or overwrite values or whatever, so it has different modes here. Um, but we want to offset values, and we're going to offset the scale by negative one in all axes, like so. So that's basically made our objects disappear because they only had a point size of one to begin with. However, we want them to um, the scale of them uh, because the uh, we want the scale of them to be affected by the volume noise uh, because we're going to add an explode node, and the explode node is going to uh, get the uh, scales of these points and use it to scale the faces. So um, let's turn off our dagger objects only display here in the outliner and type in noise. Um, you could do this through the, the node editor if you wanted to, just map the connections on the um, 3D placement node here. Then middle mash drag the volume noise over onto the strength map like so, and then you can see that we have full scale and then these faces are shrinking down until there is nothing left. Um, okay, so there you go. Um, so that's what's going on there. And we can cancel out of that search, turn on dag only objects again. And then we can hide our repro because we don't need it anymore. Um, and then on this mesh network, we can add an explode node. And the explode node is what's going to scale down the faces based on what we're doing to those points in that network. And so let's just drag our sphere here onto the exploding mesh. Uh, so that sets up a history for us um, for the exploding mesh and then what we can do is um, if we can just step through the animation. So we've got a nice smooth sphere here and as we step through the faces start breaking up and then they disappear. Pretty cool eh? So that was pretty easy. So like that we can affect, you see the sphere? Um, the sphere is, has deformed quite a bit before the faces start breaking apart. And the reason for that is the threshold value here. We can lower the threshold value, something like that. And then the sphere will, um, it will take less deformation for the sphere to kind of like um, tear itself into pieces. But uh, I mean, that's, you know, it's entirely down to whatever your personal taste is. So uh, whatever you'd like. So, um, oops. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. So... <laughs> That's pretty crazy. So um, I did that by accident. So we should try something like let's try something like 0 0.2, and then um, yeah. So this is more like what was in the um, uh, GIF that I had uh, that I showed you earlier. So um, yeah. So if we just scrub through here, cool. So that's our kind of like mesh is integrating. Now we've got all of these kind of spikes we have on the surface. So let's make some spikes. Uh, I'm going to just create a, a polygon pyramid here. And then what I'm going to do is, um, I can't actually remember how I did this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the pyramid, I'm going to group it, and then um, I'm going to call this spike. And then inside the group, I'm going to grab the pyramid and move it up so it's sat in the origin like so. Approximately, doesn't need to be perfect. Um, and then, now, <laughs> you can always adjust this later, whoops, you can always adjust this later, uh, but let's grab um, the top vertex on the pyramid, and then I'm going to stretch it up, like so, um, okay, so, right, um, now, let's create a mesh network with this pyramid, um, I'm actually going to go into the mesh editor here, and I'm going to rename this one, um, uh, what am I going to name this, um, scale, Faces network, something like that. It's too long, it doesn't fit. Um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, so let's create a new network. So we can go to the create menu here and go create mesh network. 
And um, so this one, uh, what we're going to do, if I go back to, say, frame one, uh, we're going to create a spike on every face, just like we created a cube on every face before. So let's do that. Um, I'm just thinking about this now. I wonder if I could do the whole thing in one mesh network. Anyway, let's not try that. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. So uh, on the distribute node for the new um, uh, for the new network, let's drag in our exploded mesh, which is now called P Solid Two. <clears throat> this isn't like standard uh, history. Uh, this is all a bit weird. Like uh, the piece we've created a new mesh and hidden the old one, and but the history is. In, if you're interested in that, um, it's the setup's kind of weird because of how explode works. It needs points in and points out and everything. So, um, yeah, the, it's this is why you can't access the mesh at the top level because the old mesh is actually still here. It's just hidden at the moment. So, um, anyway. <laughs> Ignore me. So I've put a spike on the exploded mesh and I'm going to change it again to um, flood mesh um, with use face center. Uh, what I can do is I can uh, hit enable scaling here, which is going to scale the faces to the mesh size. So one and then um, as the faces get larger, these things get larger and then kind of like die. So that's one way of maybe achieving the effect, uh, but we're not going to do that. We are going to um, going to achieve this by using the same volume noise. Um, now there's a problem with this. So if I was to uh, add a strength node here to say affect the size of these objects, and then I was to drag in that volume noise, I'll just do it through the node editor this time so you can see if you um, uh, don't know how to do that. So you just uh, map the place 3D texture and that over here um, has got the volume noise on it. So on the second network here, if we go to the mass strength tab, we can drag and drop the volume noise onto the scale. Make sure you're in the scale roll down. It's a strength map slot. And then you see there's no spikes. And then um, as the um, map becomes white, so like towards the end of its life, these spikes grow. And then the faces all disappear. And so um, it all, go, all goes a bit mad because the faces have disappeared and therefore have no scale and we reset to one and it's all a bit odd. I don't know. Um, so what we need to do is we need to have the, we need to tell the, um, we need to tell the strength node that these objects are going to be, um, uh, these, we're going to tell the strength node that these objects are going to be have zero scale when the when the noise volume noise is black and they'll have zero scale when the volume noise is white but we need to have them to have full scale when the volume noise is say 50% gray so it's a little bit weird um, we can do that uh, we could do that actually two ways um, well there's two ways to do this first of all we could cheat we could actually just create a fall off object right then we could scale the fall off object up uh, so uh, like here maybe and then if we play with the fall off object settings, uh, um, and instead of just having a normal fall off ramp, we do like something like this. And then, um, so at frame zero, the spikes aren't inside, uh, the spikes are kind of like um, at this end of the fall off, and so they've got no scale. But then as they move through the fall off, the spikes like appear like that. And then as they reach the edge of the fall off, they lose their scale again because the fall off goes down again at the end. So that's kind of like one way of doing it really, really quickly and faking it. But why fake it when you can spend uh, ages doing something that's no better? So let's do that. Um, I'm going to just uh, scooch back to, say, a frame in the middle here. And then uh, let's grab the pyramid and I'm going to give it a material uh, just so we can see it better. Let's give it, uh, uh, let's give it a blue or something, uh, less horrendous, something like that maybe, uh, like that. And then, um, yes, just so we can see them a bit better. And then, uh, <laughs> and then, and then, and then. Yes, we're going to do this the complicated way, yeah. So we're going to use the volume noise for everything, just because we can. So, no editor? I had the no editor. There's no editor. So, um, here's the volume noise, and we have a we have a strength node somewhere. So, I kind of don't need any of these, but here's the strength node. So we've got a strength node, and the volume noise is going into the strength node. Um, all of this stuff, we can get rid of it, just get rid of all those nodes, and then all of these, we can get rid of those as well, and then all we're left with is volume noise and the strength node, which is what we want. Okay, so we need to remap the values of the volume noise node, and we need to re remap the values so that, like I said, um, white is nothing, black is nothing, but 50% grey is everything. <laughs> 
So let's do that using a color, whoops, American spelling, color, what's it called? Uh, color remap? <laughs> Hold on, if I type in remap, will it appear? Remap color, there it is. This node here, um, which I've used so many times, I knew its name off by heart. So if I uh, select these two no nodes and then hit the two key, uh, what I can do is you can see the existing connections and I can take the out color from the volume noise and plug it into the remap colors color slot. And then I can take the out color from the remap color node and plug it into the scale strength map slot of the mass strength node. So if I just like, dock this down here so that we can see it. Um, we, now we can remap the values based on these ramps. So we're going to do exactly what we did with that fall off ramp that you saw before. Uh, what we can do is we can just adjust the values. And so um, it's worth uh, noting, I don't know if you uh, know this, but the um, the way that <clears throat> the way that uh, strength map colors work in MASH is that uh, red uh, strength is the X channel um, Green strength is the Y channel, and then blue strength is the Z channel. So you can actually scale uh, objects down in three different axes with one map. Uh, it's pretty cool, pretty powerful actually, but um, I don't suppose it's much used. Uh, but um, yeah, but it's, uh, just because people don't know it does that. But um, yeah, uh, so if we just adjust these maps like so, now when we run the, um, keep creating points, do um, now when we run the playback, we should have no scale at frame zero, um, and then we should have no scale at the end. Ooh, cool! Really, really cool. Okay. Oh, nearly. I need to I think. I need to play with some of the settings. Anyway, on the on that um, noise map. Uh, so um, I actually think that there shouldn't really be any spikes at this point. So what I might do is like move this in uh, a little bit. You could do like you could scale up the fall off or whatever before that would do the same thing if you were doing the other method. Let's do that, and then yep. I sorry everyone. I'm just going to. I'm just fussing over this a little bit. Sorry. And you can obviously you can make these um you can make these smooth if you want to. So yes, just I just wanted to see a little bit of a gap between these things before um uh before they uh the gap between the faces before you saw the spikes. That's what I was after. Um, right, so that's done. We can, we can take our original pyramid if we want to and we can like scale it uh, down a little bit in the X and, uh, just to offset that so that we have thinner spikes um, so that they're not quite so all encompassing. Maybe like 0, 3, 0, 3 in there. Well, is that taking some of the fun out of this? I don't know. Let's have a playback and see. Um, uh, that strength, I can get rid of that. Just break the connections, I could have deleted it. Um, so we end up with something like, yeah. <laughs> we end up with something like, yeah. Um, okay, so that's that's kind of it. That's uh, that's disintegrating. Oh yeah, I was gonna, should I fix this problem with the strength map? Um, I can just about be bothered. Um, what do I need to do? Do I need to play with? I need to play with something in here. I'm not quite sure what I need to play with in here. Definitely something. Okay, so play just lowering the amplitude slightly seems to have um, fixed those points at the end and not broken the animation. So happy days. So um, yeah, just scrub through here and then if I turn on anti aliasing, which might make my or a Mac fall over. No, it's okay. So yeah, um, that is the disintegration effect. Pretty simple, really. So it's an explode node and um, two mash networks. So oh, uh, sorry, texture deformer, um, and then a mash network with an explode node, and then a mash network for the spikes. Ta-da! Um, and then obviously the final result is something like that. So I um, hope you find that tutorial useful um, and let me know if you've got any questions. Um, uh, yeah, uh, see you next time.